this is the Zero Level Network. It's about um, testing for independence. And don't try and think about independence. Picking variables or events that might have some dependence is really quite tricky. But the best way to test independence is to use the rule. If the probability of A intersect B is the same as the probability of A times the probability of B, then events A and B are independent. If this isn't the case, then there's some dependence between A and B. By applying the rule, you'll be able to tell you very quickly in which of events are independent. I'll take example 5.8 question 1. A tetrahedron is rolled twice. A tetrahedron is a triangular pyramid. So it's got four sides. So it's got one, two, three, or four outcomes. If it's rolled twice, four by four, there's 16 outcomes. Um, event A is an even on the first roll. Event B is at least one even on the two rolls. And event C is three on the second roll. Are any of these events independent? That is, are A and B independent? Or are A and C independent? Or are B and C independent? That's what the question is asking. Okay, I need to use some way of representing the sample space when rolling for tetrahedron twice. Because it's 4x4, four four, a tree diagram would be uh, quite large because that's 16 outcomes. But a lattice diagram is really quite useful when rolling two die or having two events where there's a number of outcomes. On the first roll, I can have a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4. And on the second roll, I can have a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4, which really gives me a nice lattice grid of all of the outcomes. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. That's a 1 on the first roll. 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4. 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. So they're my 16 outcomes. They're all equal in life length because each of the faces on the tetrahedron are equal in life length as well. Okay, so now can I use this lattice diagram to help me work out the probability? Okay, so probability of A, that is, A even on the first roll, evens on the first roll, are these four and these four. So eight out of 16 or one half. Probability of B, at least one even on the two rolls, at least one even on the two rolls. So it's all of those because they all have at least one even. And it's this one and that one and that one and that one because that's one even, that's one even, one even, two evens, one even, two evens. One even, one even, one even, two evens, one even, two evens. Which then give me 12 out of 16, or three quarters. And the probability of C, where C is a three on the second roll, three on the second roll is one, two, three, four. Those four. All of them along that row there all have a three on their second roll, which then be four out of sixteen or one quarter. Okay. Are A and B independent? Well, they'll be independent if the probability of A intersect B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Probability of A I know is one half. Probability of B is three quarters. That gives me three eighths. So, what is the probability of A intersect B? That is, get an even on the first roll and at least an even on the two rolls. So I've got to match those two events. Even on the first and at least one even in the two rolls. Well, it's got to be even on the first, so that gives me those eight. And the other ones that satisfy B 
13 times 5R, so the 8 of them. 8 times 16, which is a half, and a half goes out into a C40, so therefore A and B are not independent. Okay, what about A and C? Then, they'll be independent if the full root root of A intersects C equal to the full root root of A times the full root root of C. We know the probability of A is a half. We know the probability of C is a quarter. So that gives you one eighth. Now, probability of A and C. I have to have an even on the first roll, and I've got to have a three on the second roll. And it's an end. Both have to occur. Even on the first and three on the second only occurs two ways. This one, two, three, and this one, four, three. They're the only two ways that both even on first and three on second. Therefore, that's two out of 16, which is one out of eight, and that's a bingo. That is correct. Therefore, A and C are independent. Now, I've run out of time. I won't do C and B, but if you look at the notes that are posted on Simon, this question's been done by hand, and you can check that B and C are not independent. Cheers.